Welcome to the third episode in the Building a 2G GSM Network series, Installing and Configuring OpenBTS and Asterisk. Now, a quick recap of what we've talked about so far. In episode one, we had the project overview of everything you can expect from this series. Episode two was the most recent one before this. That was SDR Basics. We talked about software-defined radios and what they mean for the project that we're building right here, and also what they can do beyond just our project. Now, the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be honest, is not to be a full-on tutorial. It's instead for entertainment purposes only, just to kind of show you how it works, or at least how I have figured out how to make it work. Many other tutorials that are full length offer a whole lot more information and knowledge than I will ever have. I will link those down below if you do wanna go forward with actually figuring out how to do this. Uh, this again is just gonna be kind of showing an overview of what OpenBTS is and how I've managed to get it to work. It's a Frankenstein situation here, but hope you find it entertaining. Now, what is OpenBTS? Well, the BTS stands for Base Transceiver Station, and that's basically just is software that mimics an actual cell tower. Those are what the official cell towers are named, are base transceiver stations, because they transmit and receive at the exact same time, like we talked about in the previous episode. And this kind of just creates a lab environment for these older phones that support 2G to be able to be used again. And you can basically configure it to be whatever it is you want to be, but it's what drives the actual SDR and provides the communication between the phones, uh, the texting, the data. It's basically the all-in-one that encompasses that. Now, installing, that's kind of a tricky story depending on how you want to go about it. The easiest way that I've personally found is to download this ISO from 2014. This is a full wrapped package of Linux. It's actually Ubuntu Linux with OpenBTS already baked in and running. It's fairly easy to install. You just download the ISO and install it like any other Linux OS if you're familiar with the process of either creating a USB stick or a CD if you wanna be old school. Or you can be like me and I installed mine on my Proxmox virtual server. I actually created a whole new uh, virtual computer just for Ubuntu. And this is what it looks like after it's installed. There's not a whole lot to actually see. It's gonna look very familiar to those of you that understand Ubuntu. It's just a Ubuntu home screen from 2014. Now, unfortunately, as nice as it is to have a UI such as this, isn't it so pretty? There's nothing to actually do here within the console. All of OpenBTS is actually configured through the terminal. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with a command line or a terminal, I'm gonna walk you through it as best I can. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of show what it looks like behind the scenes. On the home screen is a very general Linux layout like you would expect. Jumping on into the config though, this is the actual log of what is happening behind the scenes in OpenBTS. This is gonna tell you everything that's happening. There's a whole lot going on on screen right now. I'm gonna be honest, I don't fully know all of what it's talking about. It's basically kind of showing uh, a timing error, which I haven't been able to fix, but it still works regardless of that. In fact, uh, I'm gonna let you know that this is mostly errors, is what you're going to see within the uh, actual command line. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this phone into airplane mode so that you can see what the command line looks like when a phone joins. Uh, really quick, while this is disconnecting, handover failed is a kind of a funny error. This is the handoff between cell towers, is what it's trying to emulate. And if there's no other cell towers, well, it can't hand off to them. Uh, you can disable it. It's pretty hard to go in and actually turn all that off. At least I haven't been able to figure out how, so I just left it. It doesn't actually cause any issues, uh, but this is, the handover is what happens when you go from one base station to another. So like if you're driving, you're going from one cell, or cell tower to another. This can actually emulate that. If you wanted to build multiple base stations, it, you can actually configure them to hand off from one to the other, which is really cool. Anyway, turning airplane mode off on the iPhone 2G, you'll see as it connects, it'll actually show up here on the command line as an entry as the MZ. When this phone joins, not only do you see it on the command line, but jumping into the text messages here, you'll get a text from 101, and that'll actually say, welcome to the test network, and it'll give you your MZ or IMSI. 
This is the official number of your SIM card. It's the identifier of the actual SIM card within your phone. And it's kind of serves as the identifier all throughout this process. As you'll see, the MZ is very important and it's what authenticates with OpenBTS. So you take this MZ, you put it into OpenBTS and only this MZ will be allowed to join. Everyone else gets kicked off. I'll show you that a little bit later on in the config. In fact, actually, let's jump right into that. Let's jump into the, what the config actually looks like. Now, OpenBTS is configured completely with SQLite and it ends up looking like a database such as this. It's been recommended to me to not show my actual database for the base station that I have built. I'm not entirely sure why, but I've just been told it's not a good idea. So instead I'm showing you what the default uh, base station DB looks like. This is what you get when you install OpenBTS from scratch. So a really important term to base stations are the MCC and the MNC. Now these, if you go over here, you can actually see the uh, comments and it shows kind of a short description of what each one fills out. Uh, the mobile country code is the one that shows the country that you're in. So 310 is for the United States. And then there's the mobile network code, MNC, that shows the specific carrier that you're on. So for example, 310410, that is United States of America, and then AT&T has 410. I'll list the database in the description below. Wikipedia has the full MCC and MNC list out. Here's the problem. If you do 310, 410, you're actually broadcasting as an AT&T cell tower. That's the exact MCC and MNC that the official towers use. So all other phones on AT&T will see your base station as an official AT&T cell tower. That's no bueno. You do not want that. You do not want to broadcast that you are an AT&T tower. So I recommend doing 100-100. That is test country, test network. No phone is looking for that network and they're not able to join that network unless you're specifically looking for it and you specifically tell your, that's really the only way that you should ever set up a base station like this because the 100 100 is the only way that kind of avoids big trouble beyond that are your gsm power settings these are the really important ones that kind of tell your base station how limited you want it to be on top of communicating to the cell phone how limited you wanted it to be um, all of this is described in the manual that i showed originally this is where you downloaded the iso at first uh, the manual for dummies and the installation manual are all available at this link as well. They talk more in depth about what each and every one of these options does, uh, including power management. That's a really big one. Your gain, your country, blah, blah, blah. You're going to want to have to figure out how that works for your specific base station. And I had to tweak it a lot to get it working where I felt comfortable with it. So that's going to be up to you to kind of figure that out. One more quick one that I'll show just for fun is the short code. This is the actual name that the base station is putting out, such as AT&T or whatever, uh, that shows up in the top left corner here. Now on iPhones, this is hard coded. You can't actually change it, it won't show up. Androids, Blackberries, others, theoretically I haven't tested it myself, but they're supposed to be the ones that actually see the short code. Just for fun really quick, I kind of wanted to show you how I got DX working in the corner of this phone, and that's actually using SB settings. So if you jump into more in this very classic jailbreak tweak that has a lot of powerful options that you can still download now. Going down to system options, you'll notice there's an option to set your custom carrier name called make it mine. That's another jailbreak tweak that doesn't work so well, but it works well here for some reason. Set your carrier and the phone when you exit will officially respring and it'll show up in the top left corner. Just kind of a fun way to show you that. Uh, beyond your OpenBTS database, let me show you where to actually find it. So exiting out of this and going into here. If you go to the very beginning of your database and go to slash ETC and slash OpenBTS, this is where all of your databases live. There is an example SQL, there's the official OpenBTS, and then a few other SMQ uh, SQLs. This is what manages your text messages and that's just kind of running by default. There's not a lot they have to change there. Uh, I'll walk through more about how SMSQ actually or SMQ actually works. Um, but this is where you put your database in after you've configured it here. I use DB browser for SQLite on my Mac. You can use whatever you want to edit your uh, SQ database. 
So in a nutshell, that's kind of how to get your station up and running, period. Uh, straight up plugging in your, your SDR and running OpenBTS, which is running by default, by the way. The second you start uh, the virtual machine, it's running in the background. There's nothing that you need to do to actually turn it on. You'll connect. It's actually pretty straightforward. You just change your database to be what it is you actually want your station to be, upload it, refresh, done. You're good to go. Let's talk more about, actually, you know what? This would be a good point to talk about SMQ. When you first join, remember that 101 text that tells you like, welcome to the network, here's your MZ. This is where you'll actually respond with the phone number that you want the phone to be assigned to. Now this officially, you'll see that I kind of messed up here, but in theory, this is how it's supposed to work. You enter the phone number or the extension that you want this phone to be. It replies back saying, okay, this phone is registered. That's how you text the phone. So you can now uh, 11030, if I were to text that from another phone, it would show up here. Now again, if you want to edit all of that, you can go back into your SQL database for SMQ. Now for phone calls, that's all gonna be routed through Asterisk. Asterisk is actually an open source software that's been used for a long time, I think primarily in the enterprise. So you think of like an office building with a bunch of phones all over the place. They're all IP phones, of course, by now. They're all managed mostly by Asterisk. It's a very common uh, budget entry level way to do that. And Asterisk is used here as well. So if you're familiar with voice over IP or configuring asterisk, this will actually be really straightforward. It's no different. It's just vanilla asterisk. Uh, the configuration files are available yet again in slash etc slash asterisk. The main files that are going to be most important here are going to be extensions.conf and sip.conf. Jumping into extensions. This is where the phone numbers actually live. So you put in, remember that number that we registered before, you can actually mirror that here. So if you dial, I believe it's 11030 is this 2G, that dials the MZ that the actual SIM card registers as, and then it hangs up. It's really actually straightforward. You just kind of plug and play the numbers that you want to go where. I also have mine set up so that invalid goes to an invalid message. I have uh, not available for certain numbers. Uh, 611 says not in service. That's because I want to actually make it something eventually. Now, if you saw my short on the channel where I called 377-73776, that actually spells out Espresso. That plays back the entirety of the song by Sabrina Carpenter, Espresso. There's an audio file within slash ETC that you can jump uh, audio files into. I dropped Espresso into that. I told it to play it back and that's what happens, you can play back any audio file you want by putting it right here. So kind of fun things that you can do, you can add more to asterisk as well. It even does like the whole, for this press one, for this press two, you can actually set that all up in this configuration. And on top of that, you can add actual voice over IP support. So you can put uh, any provider that you want that offers voice over IP into this and make this an IP phone. It's really kind of cool and it's something that I want to do eventually to make this phone actually usable. You can give it an extension and tell it what phone number it is and call out using this to real phones. Another thing I need to show you with asterisk is actually going to be the SIP configuration. This is where you're actually going to put in the phones, period. And this is where you're going to have like the 3GS that I have over there is 100-100. That officially gives it the caller ID. And then down here, you have the iPhone SE. And then this iPhone 2G right in front of me is 1030. The MZ, again, is going to be the identifier. This kind of expresses what this phone is, its caller ID, its extension. This is also vitally important because the extensions references this and it kind of ties everything together. And I'll show you now how to make sure when you put a phone into uh, this confirmation. So doing sudo asterisk dash rvvv, this gives you the asterisk CLI and this is how you actually kind of talk to asterisk. You can do help. Oh no, there is no help for asterisk. Just kidding. <laughs> 
So the best thing you can do here is actually bring up SIP show peers. This shows the phones that are all unknown. These are all turned off right now. Uh, this is the actual 2G in front of me. It does show up as okay. This is vital because asterisk doesn't always work. Uh, you have to check this and make sure that the phone actually shows up and then go into extensions and tell it where you want it to go. So Asterisk has a really helpful CLI, but OpenBTS also has. It's very incredibly powerful CLI that kind of drives all of it from the back end. That's in slash OpenBTS. You can jump into the CLI here. If you do help, you'll see all of the options that are available for your OpenBTS CLI. Uh, there's help like I just showed. If you do power, I believe it shows where you're at right now in your DB. Uh, send SMS. If you do send SMS, you can actually send text messages as a test to specific MZs. Uh, there's RX gain. This actually shows where you're at at 47 dB, which I'm happy with. I like that. This is kind of how you can just manage your base station from one spot. And there are a whole lot of other options within this that I'm not familiar with. I'd have to read the manual to figure out what they do too. But I do know that every time I have an issue, the CLI is where I come to to actually command this base station. I think at this point, that's kind of everything to show. The main thing is just monitoring this log to kind of uh, dig through it. And I know this is just a wall of text, uh, but this is where you're actually going to watch for phones joining what their MZ is, whether they're connecting to it or not. Um, GPRS has a lot of issues that you're seeing in here. Handover has a lot of issues that you're seeing in here. If I really wanted to fix the space station with a lot of these things that I want to expand into, I could. Uh, speaking of expansion, there's a lot that you can add on top of this. We already covered a lot of them, such as uh, asterisk doing voice over IP to actual phones. You can add Google Voice in theory to this whole setup and actually be able to do calling and texting. Uh, making these phones even more usable. GPRS data, man. I really wanted GPRS to be fixed by the time I was doing this video, but I could not figure it out. It's actually really complicated. And you basically have to create your own network within the network. And it is possible. Uh, the configuration for it is just more complex than I'm able to handle, I'm being honest. So I would love to have seen GPRS actually working on this, but it's it's not gonna happen for this video. But in theory, uh, you should be able to configure it within this by doing GPRS and following these commands. Outside of that, I'm pretty sure that's, that's just about it. It's actually, uh, it's straightforward, but it's not. It's very much just kind of a plug and play. You just have to uh, read through this manual. And let me go ahead and bring up the manual really quick just to kind of show what this looks like because this is, this is complicated. I mean, look, it's just page after page after page. It's 182 pages long to configure OpenBTS. If you really want to mess around with this, I walked into this knowing very little about OpenBTS or even just kind of navigating everything you just saw, but just messing around with this really fun. And I'll be honest, ChatGPT is an incredible help here. Uh, I just kind of went to this log and copied and pasted the entire thing into ChatGPT and said, tell me what's going on. Like break everything down and it will line by line tell you what each of these mean. And it's kind of like learning another language. Eventually you will get it down and eventually looking at this log will make sense. There is English to be found here, but it's really fun. And it's, it's an experiment that's never ending. I, I still have so much fun trying to get things working. And I really hope that if you do want to dive into this, this was helpful to kind of at least get you started on where to where to look and what to actually do to get this working. So thanks for bearing with me on all of this. I know this was a lot to take in at once. Hopefully you found it entertaining. You thought this was kind of cool seeing the, the back end of this project and how it works. Uh, next up is going to be episode four. That's where we're gonna see all of this come together. I'm actually going to show how the phone calls work, how the text works, and we're gonna see this base station actually function <laughs> once all of this is put together, all the pieces of the puzzle come in to form this beautiful picture that's happening right in front of us. So looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. I'll see you there.